I believe the gospel is just like happiness. Um, I would define the gospel as like text messages when you're in a relationship with someone. So like I would define it as a lifestyle a lot. And the gospel is just a story of how we're supposed to live it out. I define the gospel as love, truth, and light. Okay. Christ died for our sins in the accordance with the scriptures that he was buried that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. So Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. God, if you believed that I did my part as a Christian to serve you, then you'll let me in. Josiah, would you identify yourself as a Gen Zer? I would. Okay. One of the goals for us here with the Gen Zers is to help them make sure that they understand the gospel and that they're able to preach it correctly. Now, I'm just going to tell you because we have a concern for you, okay, Josiah? You don't understand the gospel. Would, would it be okay if we explained it to you? Go ahead. Okay. So, first of all, we have to understand our standing before God is one of unrighteousness. Romans 3.10 says there's no one righteous, not even one. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of, of the, the glory, glory of God. God. James 2.10 says if we break just one part of God's law, we're guilty of breaking it all. Have you ever lied? Yes. Have you ever stolen anything? No. Have you ever... Wait a minute. You've not stolen anything even no. as a kid? I don't believe I... Like... Oh, well then... Okay. Little toy. Yeah. Okay. Toy. Yes. There, there, there you yes. go. He stole the G.I. Joe from his brother. Okay. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Have you ever disobeyed your parents? Yes. I've only gone through roughly half of the Ten Commandments and you've broken them all. How would you stand before God if you had to confess that you did your part? Because that's what you said, I have to do my part. What does 1 Peter 3.18 down there say? Read that out loud. Christ suffered once for our sin, for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous. Okay, now think about this verse, Josiah. Who's the righteous in this verse? Christ. That's right. Who's the unrighteous? We are. That's right. So righteousness is the first part, Josiah. We have to exchange our unrighteousness for God's righteousness. righteousness. All right? Repentance is the second part. We have to repent of our sins. And Josiah, more specifically in your case, I would say you have to repent of any thought that you could do your part, that you could make yourself right before God. You have to confess your complete unrighteousness before God. And the third part, the three R's of the gospel, righteousness, repentance, and resurrection. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, if Christ has not been raised, our faith is futile and you're still in your sins. So you as a Gen Zer, first of all, I want you to understand what the gospel is. So Josiah, let me test you. Based on everything I just said, if I asked you, again, to define the gospel, what would you say? To let everything, let all of our sins, all of our, we need to repent. To give all the glory to God and not to be the righteous ones. Not look to seek to be the righteous ones. Amen. That's great, Josiah. I feel like the Holy Spirit is working in you right now. Quickening your mind, giving you wisdom. Yes, you are the unrighteous one. Christ is the righteous one. All I could do was just share in that moment what Jesus has done for my life and how much I, I want that in their life as well. You know, 2 Corinthians 4 or 5, Stephen says, mm. we preach Christ, not ourselves. Mm. We preach Christ, mm. not ourselves. Yeah. So you've got two minutes to share the gospel with a family member. You're not going to be talking about yourself. Mm. It's not going to work. Mm. In, in fact, Stephen, I would say it doesn't work with anyone. Mm. It's interesting. So we need, we need to get right to the root of the gospel. Mm. And Paul describes... The gospel. Let, me, let me share this with you, Stephen. Yes. In 1 Corinthians 15... I don't want to give you this track. Mm. Paul said, this is the gospel mm. that I preach to you. you got mm. two minutes to share. What does he say? How does he mm. define the gospel? Read it. 
Yes, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. Exactly. Yes. So, this is what, Stephen, this is what mm. we call the root of the gospel. Mm, I love this. All right. Okay. That's our justification. Because okay. you know the theological difference between just God justifying and sanctifying us. Mm -hmm. When he sanctifies us, that's the fruit of the gospel. Mm. When he justifies us, that's the root of the gospel. Mm. And Stephen, Christ's death, burial, and resurrection was done by who? Mm, Jesus. Not by us. We don't have a part mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. So when people say the gospel is Jesus Christ, that's about the simplest way you can say it. It mm. is. It's not really us. Sin requires punishment. It says the punishment, the wage for that sin is death. Um, and it says, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Um, and uh, it's a free gift. Um, it's not something you can earn. It's not something um, you, can, you can do anything for. It says you're saved by grace through faith. This is not um, of yourself. This is not, um, not because of your works so that no one may boast in his presence. Emily, you define yourself as a Christian. Yes. How would you define the gospel? Um, it's so funny that this happens because last night I was evangelizing with some friends, or trying to, and I tried to just like, I was like, okay, I went up to this group and I was like all gusto and like, I tried to say the gospel to them and it was like, what am I talking about? Like, I didn't even know what I was saying. And so I've been praying about it a lot. Emily, yeah. if you as a Gen Zer, are preaching or focusing on the fruit of the gospel, mm -hmm. you're going to be confusing people. Mm -hmm. Because what, what's, what's an unbeliever's response going to be most of the time? It's going to be, well, I already do that. Right. And you know, maybe I just need to step it up a little bit to, yeah. to gain, gain God's favor. Yeah. If you're preaching the fruit of the gospel, you're not preaching the true gospel. Yeah. And so the order has to be the root followed by the fruit. Does that that's make really good. sense? Yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah. So maybe this is a way for you to shorten up your gospel presentation and get right to it. Right. No, this is so good. I really appreciate it.